Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. My name is Jason. Thanks for checking out this video today. I'm super excited about this topic. Today we're going to be talking about the top five accessories or gadgets that you can use on your power stations during power outages, during an emergency, or even while camping. Now on the table today, we have a host of different things, starting with DC powered fans, 12 volt heated blankets, ton of different lighting options, battery chargers, and DC powered air pumps. Now, all of these things are super helpful if you're out on the go, and most of these are power efficient, so you're gonna get a very long runtime on all your different models of power stations. Hope you guys are excited. Let's go ahead and jump right into the DC powered fans. Now, most of you probably have an AC powered box fan at home. They're super cheap, but they pull around 100 watts, so you're not gonna get a very long runtime using one of those larger fans on a power station. So if you want more runtime, you're gonna wanna go for a more efficient portable option, and that's what you get with these two DC powered fans. Now, this first fan we're gonna talk about is the O2 cool powered fan. Now, it takes D batteries in the bottom, and it comes with this switching power adapter, but it has a 5521 barrel connector plug on the side, so you can plug in a 5521 power cable and power this fan it has two different settings it has a low mode that pulls around four to five watts and then a high mode that pulls around 10 watts now this one works really well we use it while camping i've had it for about three years and i haven't had any issues now this smaller fan up front is a usb power fan it has a nice usb a connector you plug that in your power station on low mode you're going to pull less than a watt on medium mode, you're gonna pull around two watts, and then on high, which moves quite a bit of air, you're gonna be pulling around five watts. Now, both of these are excellent options, and you can check out all the links down below in the video description. Let's move on to the next section. So in this next session, we're gonna talk about how to stay warm using your power station. Now, I've had a lot of questions about, well, will a small power station like this run a floor heater? I have my Lasco 1500 watt floor heater, and that will not even run on most medium power stations. Even if you had a large power station like the AC200P, it's not going to run for very long. It's gonna run for about an hour and a half and then it's gonna be completely out of power. So there's a lot better ways to heat up and stay warm using a small power station. And one of the best ways to do that is by using a 12 volt heated blanket. Now this is the Stanley branded uh, heated blanket. It's considered an automotive blanket because it comes with this 12 volt cigarette plug. Now, when you plug this in, it's gonna pull around 50 watts, and after about 10 minutes, it goes down to about 45 watts, which is really efficient. It does a really good job keeping you nice and toasty. Now, there are two ways to use this blanket. One way would be to put it under you and the heat would rise up, and then you can have a blanket over top of you. The other way to use it is you could be uh, laying down, you put this on top of you, and then you put another heavy blanket on top of that, and it'll hold all that heat in. And then you could just basically unplug this when you don't need it and plug it back in when you need it, probably cycling on and off every hour, and then you get a really, really long runtime. Now, another great option for a really small space, like a truck bed camper or um, a teardrop camper would be one of these smaller heaters. Now, this is a small 200 watt ceramic heater. Um, it works really well. It does have some safety issues because it doesn't have a tip over sensor, but um, after it starts up, you're gonna get a surge current um, it's going to be around 250 watts, but then it drops down to around 186 watts. Now this works really well because all the heat that it puts out, there's no wasted electricity. So you will be heating your space up fairly well, but you're not going to get as long runtime on a power station because uh, 200 watts is going to bring down the power station a lot faster than 50 watts. Now talking again about the 12 volt heated blanket, one of the best ways to hold in that heat is by using a heavy wool blanket. And one of the best brands on Amazon is this Arcturus uh, wool blanket. This is the military gray. I have two of these. These work extremely well. Um, they're heavy, they don't itch. And so if you're looking for a good emergency blanket, this wool blanket here is a great option. Let's move on to the next section. So in the next section, we're gonna be talking about multiple lighting options whenever you're using your power station. Now, a lot of these power stations have built-in LED lights. Some of them are spot beams. Some of them are diffused LEDs, but you'll notice right away that you're gonna want more light if the power's out because it just doesn't provide that much light. So let's go ahead and dive into a few options. Now, one of the first options that works really well for lighting is this USB powered light. Now, this is an LED light with a long power cord. You plug one side into a USB-A port on your power station, then it has a power switch built in. So you can easily turn it on and off. When you plug it in, it's fairly bright and it only pulls around four watts. Now you can have as many of these plugged in as you do USB ports. Now I only have two on this particular power station, so you can purchase two of these. Now, another option for lighting would be using this LED 12 volt lighting strips. Now I put a ton of these in my shed where I run it off a battery in a solar panel. But these work really well. It's kind of a custom setup. You'd plug it into your 12 volt output options 
and uh, you can get quite a bit of light using 12 volt strip light. Now, if you're looking for something that's a little bit more portable, I have two lantern options. This is my Phoenix CL25R. This has a built-in charging port along with this one here, so you can actually charge these lights up um, using a USB cable that you'd plug into the power station. So you can kind of get a ton of lighting over and over again as you charge them up. Now these are very, very efficient. Now this is the Iceco Lantern Power Bank. This has a built-in uh, power bank with around 4,000 milliamp hours of capacity. So you can actually charge up your cell phone with this lantern and then easily charge it back up with the charging cable as well. Now, of course, there are other lighting options that don't have built-in chargers. Uh, I have a tactical thrower uh, light here. It's extremely bright. It has a lithium ion battery inside. I can't charge that up though. And then I also have my Nightcore uh, HC30 headlamp. So now we're in a predicament where we have this lighting, but we can't charge it up. So I want to talk about that in the next section, which is battery chargers. Now the next category of power station accessories we're going to be talking about are portable battery chargers. So whether you have walkie talkies or flashlights or even hobby grade batteries, there's a ton of different chargers on the market. A great one that I really like is the Mi Boxer C4. Now this has four individual charging bays. This supports double A's, triple A's, lithium ion batteries like 18650s, or even the cylindrical lithium iron phosphate cells. Now this is really cool because it has dual power inputs. It accepts AC power and DC power, and the DC input port is a 5521, so it's a really common uh, input size that power stations also use. Now, if you want to keep it much more simple, you can go with just a basic Eneloop charger. This supports uh, rechargeable double A's and triple A's, and it just plugs right into an AC wall outlet here. Uh, it's a little bit cheaper and very easy to use. Now, the last charger that I want to talk about is just this Turnigy Max 80 watt. If you have any hobby grade batteries that you want to charge up for an RC airplane or for a RC maybe scale crawler, I have a Traxxas TRX4, and I like to charge up the batteries using this. Now this charges so many different chemistries, lead acid, lipo batteries, lithium iron phosphate batteries, and it just takes a simple input voltage of DC power, and then you plug in your battery over here and you can charge it right up. This also balances those batteries, which is super helpful. So there's so many different options out there for charging portable batteries, and I just wanted to include a few options that I've tested and I've owned for many years, so hopefully you guys found that helpful. Okay guys, you made it to the final category. In this part of the video, we're gonna be talking about DC powered air pumps and compressors. Now, if you've ever gone tent camping, sleeping on the ground, you know it's a horrible experience. So I always like to try to bring an air mattress. Now to pump up one of those air mattresses, you usually need a DC powered pump. You'll usually pump it up at the vehicle, plug it into your 12 volt socket in your truck or car, and then carry the air mattress to your tent and try fitting it through the door and it doesn't fit. So then you have an issue, you usually have to deflate it and it's not nearly as firm as it needs to be. But what about having a pump that you can take with you, with your power station, plug it in, and then have this in the tent and pump it up there. Now they do make these air pumps that have batteries in them, but the batteries never last very long. They have rechargeable ones with lead acid batteries that are absolutely horrible. So what I've recommended is just getting a super cheap one like this that runs right off a 12 volt cigarette plug. And then you have unlimited runtime basically off a power station. You could pump up, you know, 20 air mattresses or more and uh, everyone's gonna be happy. So I definitely recommend just the cheaper pump like this and then running it off a power station versus getting a nice fancier pump. Then you're just saving money. You already spent your money here with your really nice battery. Then you can use this one and it's super easy to carry around. Now the next accessory we're gonna talk about is this Viair DC powered compressor. Now most of the times you use these, you have your engine running on your vehicle, you plug it into the 12 volt socket and you can pump up all the tires in the vehicle. But there are a few circumstances where you can't uh, reach the 12 volt socket. Like if you have a really long trailer, you go to pump up your trailer tire after it's flat, you can't pump it up. Or if you have a vehicle that's off the road and the battery's dead or something like that, you can't you know, run this pump. It's really nice to be able to run it off a portable power station and get the job done. So these are very high quality. Viair is one of the best uh, brands that you can buy. You do pay a little bit more money, but they last forever. I have three of these, one in each vehicle, and I haven't ever had any issues with them. So I definitely recommend this brand of air compressor. Now these usually pull a ton of power up to 15 amps. So some power stations can't handle that. Now this GoLabs R500, 
can handle up to 150 watts and this does just fine. Now, I'm gonna go ahead and test this compressor on all these different power stations to show you which one it works on and which one it doesn't. Okay, we're gonna test it out on the GoLabs R500, and it's gonna be somewhere around 150 to 140 watts. Let's see what happens. Okay, GoLabs R500 works perfectly fine. Okay, we're gonna try it on the big blue CP500. This one works fine. Let's go ahead and try the next power station. Okay, the UPEZ 600. Let's see if it handles it. Oh. Okay, so it's not going to work on the UPEZ 600. Okay, EB55. Let's see what happens. Try one more time. So you start when you start up a motor like this. That's kind of uh, it's got a lot of rush current. Um, it actually thinks it's shorting out, and so that's what we're getting here. It's getting a short out error just takes too many amps. So it's almost thinking that you're basically just shorting it out. It will not work on the EB55. Okay, Energizer 320, the little battery that could maybe. Let's see what happens. Wow, guys. Wow, that's awesome. Does pretty good. Okay, so the last one we're gonna test is the Bybean 614. We'll turn the DC power on. Yep. So once the motor goes under load, it's too much uh, pressure. Let's try it one more time just to make sure. So this one actually does start it up, but it won't handle that much load. Okay, so hopefully you guys found that testing information useful. Now you know which power stations can handle a DC air compressor like this one. Okay guys, well that's basically everything I wanted to cover in the video. Now this list is not a complete list of gadgets or accessories. What would you guys include if you were going to do the same thing? What do you guys use on your power stations? Let me know down below in a comment. I'd love to hear from you guys. Now, each of the power stations that I featured in the video today, I have a dedicated review on my channel. I'll include the video links to those reviews in the video description down below if you guys are interested to learn more about that. Also, if you have any questions or comments about any of the gadgets that I use or how to find them, go ahead and check the video description down below. If you don't find a link down there, throw me a comment and I'll try to find it for you guys. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching. Hope you guys enjoyed the content. We'll see you guys in the next video.